Oh, well, come on, old to never tune kind of 12 FPS. We are back at it again on the Aberration Investigator server. I would be Morski Edge, also known as Morski. And I am here with my wonderful, fantastic friend. So do you want to say hi? Hello, I am Whirlwind Gale, otherwise known as Gale or Whirlwind. Uh, depends on who you ask. It depends on how I'm feeling that day. Uh, and I am also here. And we are here to inflict people on each other. Also, someday, someday I should really like switch up that opening. I took a moment to think and realize I said this the last time I did an FPS. <laughs> but anywho, uh, anywho, I guess going off of all of this, I am playing the lovely lady detective Oria, and um, well. It's another day in Villas Town, a pretty usual day, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably been like a slightly, like a work day that's been finished a bit earlier for the kids. So she sent them off on their way to, like, I don't know, chill, have fun, whatever torment people, you, you know how it is. Whatever the kids these days do, you know. Cause general yeah. mayhem, teenage rebellion. Exactly. Stick it to the old I people. <laughs> yeah, really. Like even if Juby isn't a teenager anymore, I think he, uh, I think he'd enjoy having a nice teenage rebellion. So. No, no, no. Juby is the one who's telling the teenagers stick it to the old people. Ah, uh, you're correct. Yes. <laughs> Moria in the background is just giving a thumbs up as he do as he uh, does this, but anywho, um Moria though is staying behind at the office cause like maybe another client will come. Work hours aren't actually over and well hey the paperwork pile is ever living, so time to attack it. <laughs> Time to attack this ever-growing monster, despite the fact that, like a hydra, the more you cut away at it, the grander it grows. The more you in my head, it just feels so tired when hearing that, like, at least she learned tricks on how to cut the paperwork pile by a lot. <laughs> Thanks to, like, some of, some of her friends, but also, yeah. There is so no much paperwork. Likes... Yeah, like, no one likes paperwork in this office. No one likes paperwork. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, well, I am going to um, do, do a bit of shenaniganery um, and uh, politely grab the camera off of whatever it was sitting on uh, and <laughs> move our scene. Uh, like, we pan out of Moria's office and sort of whoosh down the streets in, you know, a very cinematic way that, you know, you can only accomplish in cartoons. Uh, and into, I'm going to assume Villstown has parks because, you know, only the worst cities don't have parks. Oh, yeah, no, Villstown absolutely has parks. We're going to sort of whoosh into a semi-secluded area of one of the less trafficked parks where there is something this afternoon that was decidedly not there this morning. <laughs> uh, in, that, in that there is a coffin just sort of stood up against a tree. Um, there's, there's this tall coffin stood up against a tree, and from inside, there's sort of a bumping around and a shuffle and a scuffle, and a, oh, how does this thing open? That! <laughs> and there is a thud as the lid falls open and somebody falls on top of it and just, ow. That hurt. Oh. Okay. 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 We're fine. Um, where are we? 
Where am I? Um, and sitting up from where he has landed on top of this coffin lid from this box that he has just fallen out of, um, is a young man, a, a teenager with brown hair and brown eyes and a very odd suit? School uniform? Something like that. Um, and a couple minutes after he, like, falls out of this coffin, uh, out from it trots a little pure white cat with bright orange flames in her ears and at the tip of her tail. And she kind of looks up at this, at this, uh, kid who just fell out of this coffin and meows very indignantly. <laughs> um. But of course, this is a cat we're talking about. Have, oh, okay, no, there is definitely a not dignified meow that exists, <laughs> but still. No, 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 not, like, dignified. Like, she she is meowing indignantly. Uh, and oh. he kind of, like, blinks and says, well, What did you expect? Did you think you could come with me? I told you. Where I'm from, stuff like you doesn't exist. We don't even have magic. Um, and he kind of blinks and then looks at her. Tilts his head and she's like, how did you even get here anyway? You shouldn't be able to... And he kind of looks at his hand and squints at it. And pinches the outline between two fingers and pulls it away from the color and frowns. That should not be able to happen. Let's go of it. It snaps back into place. Looks down at Dyer, which is the cat, and sighs. Yeah, I think we got the lo wrong location again. Okay, come on. Let's find someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> oh. So. This kid and the mystery cat, you come out of this park and, well, you sure are somewhere new. Mm -hmm. It's like you stepped into, well, what looks like a cartoon, really. Mind mm -hmm. you, there are all kinds of people mm -hmm. looking here, all sorts of colors, all sorts of shapes. Those are living cartoons, okay. Huh. Somehow, not the weirdest shit he's seen. There are as well, like, real kind people, tieflings, really all sorts of colors, and it looks like you're in a pretty big city right now, with skyscrapers off in one direction, a couple of smaller houses in another, um... And you can see a marketplace that's a little bit further off, so... You're definitely not somewhere abandoned. But it's definitely new. Mm-hmm. And it Would is... Would your lad like to roll an investigation to see if he can figure out where he is? He would love to. Um... Which, which dice bot do we use here? I'll use Avra. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, investigate. If you, you can use the dice as well if you want, just type down the result. Um, I usually roll in DMV, is that okay? Okay, could you just, uh, like, take a picture for me? Yeah, I can screenshot. Oh, wow. Okay. High roll or low roll? First roll of... This character ever. And that's a net 20. Nice. Okay, yeah, good for them. Um, well, kiddo, 
it takes you like less than a minute to look around and find the name of the city. You find a whole bunch of signs pretty quickly and yeah, c welcome to Villa's town. Uh, you're not quite at the center. Mm -hmm. You're a little bit further off, you figure out, and you probably find the map. Mm -hmm. But you can see the directions to a fair few places, uh, like a detective's office. Um. So what does what does uh, your kid want to do? Well, he's standing there in one of in front of what I'm imagining is like a directory board with just a big map on it, and just kind of squinting at it. And that cat Dyer, she is sitting on his shoulder, and she's just kind of. She looks at him and meows, and he just looks up at her, and uh, I should note, he's been in speaking in Infernal this whole time, as and he looks up at her and says in Infernal, just, I know you can't read it. I'm surprised I can. Now come on, let's see, let's see about this detective's office. Detectives have to be knowledgeable about the area they're in, and, well, quite frankly, Ville's town is generic enough of a name that it doesn't tell me fucking anything. <laughs> it could be anywhere. I don't even... We probably aren't uh, in my home, if we are being perfectly honest. But I don't know what realm we are in, so... Off we go. Uh, and he will take himself and this cat that is sitting on his shoulder this very on fire cat. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. There have been way weirder things. You know what? Yep, this is too kind and life is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I think because of rule of funny, the like these two like walk a bit more and they come across a tabaxi. And then a little bit later, oh, yep, that is just straight up a cat tune. Mm hmm. <laughs> Dyer does like, the very like much. Just... Dyer oh? very much gives them all just like a judgmental once over as they pass and then sticks her nose up snippily as cats tend to do. <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> I think the cat to. Well, actually, no, the ta the Tabaxi probably just ignores this and goes on. I'm going to... Oh, this is a yes. The cat toon stares right back and does the same kind of haughty raises no rose up and walks away prissily. <laughs> ah, I see you found your people. <laughs> <laughs> But you make it to the office, well, to the detective's office soon enough, and, uh, well, in plain old common, there is a sign that says Moria's office. A little bit closer, you do see, like, maybe some signs, well, you see actually a sign of, like, the working time, maybe some other bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. I, the player, admittedly have never been to a detective's office, but I imagine there's stuff written. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, He's gonna look to see if, like, open consultation hours are open right now. They would be, yeah. Uh... Like, how late... Like, how late in the day do you think it is? Maybe, like, early afternoon? Yeah, yeah. Not too late, definitely. Yeah. So, like, place is definitely open, and you do see a light inside, so presumably you could open the door? Uh, presumably. And, uh, he's gonna work with that presumption, because, you know what? Life's too goddamn short. Well, you open the door, and, uh, when you, well... When you do, you hear a you hear a bit of shuffling, and then a voice goes, "Come on in." Uh, and he will step inside, uh, and he will like look up at the cat on his shoulder and give like a very stern warning, just in infernal, just 
don't touch anything that doesn't belong to you. Oh my goodness. And this cat looks down at him and just sniffs and just says back again in Infernal, You can't tell me what to do. I'll do whatever I like. I'll touch whatever I like. <laughs> well, yeah. touching will probably be fine, but um, there will be consequences if she tries to steal. It's fine. Just dire. Behave yourself. And just, even without the fucking, you know, even without knowing Infernal, the fucking mom voice comes through very hard. Just behave yourself. Nah. <laughs> yeah. And Dyer says back, just in Infernal, I'm a lady. I always behave myself. But she is thoroughly chastised. Of course. <laughs> Of course. Um, and uh, you will turn to Moria. Uh, can you see her? Uh, he needs to walk inside just a little bit. Yeah. And okay. uh, yeah, like he will be able to see a faintly amused uh, detective sitting at her desk. She makes a gesture that he's free to sit down. Uh, and he will do that and kind of give a awkward uh, wave, just hello, uh, and then say in slightly stilted infernal, just um, pardon me, is this um, do you know where I have found myself? Um, um, does Moria speak Infernal? She does not. And she will actually say, uh, I'm afraid I don't understand the language you're speaking. Do you know any other? Blink. Blink, blink. Wait, you speak common? Yeah. It's what most people here speak. I... Holy fucking shit, it has been three years since I've heard anyone speak common. Hi! Um, hello. Yeah, I... I... Sorry. I'm a little confused. It's been a while since I've heard anyone speak my home language. Hi. Um, I'm hey. you. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. You. I would be Moria, who, well, I'm the owner of this office. I can assume you've been through quite a bit then? Uh, about as much as can be expected from anyone, I suppose. Um... I'm sorry, I- Moria is casually pressing X to doubt, but she doesn't word it. <laughs> he kind of laughs a bit awkwardly and says, Um, sorry, I don't mean to barge in and ask a whole bunch of questions. I just, um, sorry if this is weird. What world have I managed to find myself in? Uh, she raises an eyebrow at the wording, like, at that wording, uh, but, well, you are currently in the town of Villastown, which is in the country of UPA, which is on the continent on, of Einquell. As for the name of this planet, it would be, uh, Zatori. You said the world now. Mm hmm. Um, feel free to roll insight. <laughs> sure, I'd love to. Wow, really, Dice? Uh, really, Avre? Oh, goodness. I mean, that's still a 13. Yeah. 
on a nat one. Oh my goodness. Well, is that enough? <laughs> I'll say that's enough. I mean, his his movements are pretty broadcast, so I'd say that's enough. Okay. Um, his eyes fucking lit up like an like an animus candle when he realized, oh shit, wait, you speak common. Mm-hmm. Um but as you go through like you are in this town, in this country, in this continent, and he just keeps not recognizing the names, he just progressively wilts. Yeah. Um, before, you know, taking a deep breath and collecting his brain back together and just being like, okay, that's... <sighs> I wish that was information I knew more about what to do with, but that's information I can use. Thank you, ma'am. It's fine. What's your situation? As the impression I've gotten by now is... You were possibly displaced. Um, he kind of pretty badly if you were somewhere where no one spoke any kind of common. He kind of rubs at the back of his neck and laughs a little awkwardly and just, uh, you could certainly say that. I'm, uh, <laughs> I guess you could say I'm worlds away from home. Uh, and he kind of does joking finger guns. Eh, that's not as funny as it was in my head. Um, Is that perhaps a bit more literal than most would think? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, pretty literal. Um, you're taking this surprisingly in stride. Uh, just to check, you're not humoring me because you think I'm insane, right? Nah, I've heard weirder. And anyways, uh... If it helps, you're not the only case of that happening. As it turns out, I'm another person who is displaced. Uh, well, that beats her passive deception, so yeah, she is not kidding. Blink. Congrats, oh, kid! Boy. You've met a fellow isekai! <laughs> isekai protagonists! <laughs> Just... Surprised, blink, and then... Huh. Okay. That's... Improbable, but apparently not impossible. Um... Cool. Apparently more common here than it is in most places, at least. Well, I mean, at least here you have a word for it. <laughs> the place I just came from, they didn't fucking know what to make of me. <laughs> he kind of laughs and rubs the back of his neck again and says, Their carriage came and kidnapped me from nowhere somehow, and then they couldn't get me home, and, well... Now I'm here, because we tried to get me home, and, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't have trusted the old crow. Like. Uh, so, like, Mori, I should say, like, she's fairly old. She's 50. Uh, she has a pretty honest face, honestly. Uh, mm -hmm. like. You you can see her list listening to you, and she's just like, "Ooh, you were not lucky back there, were you?" Okay. And out loud, she says, uh, "If it helps, well, I don't know where you came from. Einquell is fairly kind. I can, at the very least, help you get set up and give you information on this place and." Uh, if I may ask, where did you come from? Uh, a planet no one seems to have heard of. From around here, at least. Uh, I'm from Earth. Uh, okay. Spe specifically, uh, Earth in, like, the 21st century. 
All right, I admit that doesn't mean much to me either. The place where I came from is called the Metropolis, but... I think I saw well, a movie like uh, that once, but... Uh, could you please repeat that, because I didn't hear it fully. Oh, uh, he said, I think I saw a movie named that once. <laughs> Mor Moria snorts a bit and, well, at least from the impression I've gotten from you, Earth is quite a different place from the Metropolis. Uh, you can roll an insight if you want. I would love to roll insight. I like rolling insights. It's fun. <laughs> Enrichment. Enrichment. <laughs> That's a 21. Yeah. Um, you're getting the sense the Metropolis really wasn't a good place. Or it seems pretty well put together. But if you take a closer look, um, this is someone who knows how to fight devastatingly well. Which is a little surprising for a detective. Probably. I mean, I don't know what the kids saw wherever wherever the second place he came from, but compared to an Earth detective? Uh, well. Well, depends on the Earth detective. I mean, listen, we've got some crazies True. over here, too. True. <laughs> All the stuff we think of needs to be inspired by something. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he's just looking at her and is just has the absent thought in his head of, oh, this woman could probably kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's fine, though. She's not interested in doing that. You're he literally a kid who came to her office. <laughs> he kind of, like, mumbles that in Infernal. And then, <laughs> like, the cat on his shoulder says back to him again in you know, anytime he and the cat are talking to each other, it's an infernal, because that's the only language she speaks. Uh, yeah. And she, he talks back to him and, and says back, to be fair, that's not exactly a hard thing to do. Oh. And he just reaches up and boops her on the nose aggressively. Just shut. <laughs> shut. <laughs> Did not ask more for your like, sass. <laughs> like, Moria can't understand it. But, like, it's easy enough to tell when there's teasing happening, so she she simply seems amused. Uh, and he kind of recognizes that, you know, he went off on a tangent with his cat while still having a conversation with another person and kind of uh, smiles a bit embarrassedly and says, Sorry, she's... Um, this is Dyer. She is a handful. I see. Well, it's nice to meet you, Dyer. And like, she, uh, Moria will give a nod to the uh, cat. Uh, the cat gives her, you know, the very judgmental cat once over. <laughs> Moria seems completely unbothered. Um, I suppose first things first, then you. What are your current plans? Is there anything in particular that you want to find or you want to go or? Um, well, ideally, uh, <sighs> shit, this is kind of worse than last time because at least last time I wound up someplace specific. Ah, uh, shit. He kind of starts patting his jacket, looking to see if maybe he managed to bring any money with him and then realizes, wait, no, that all wouldn't work here. Shit. You're he's not signed. actually asking me to work on a case for you, so consider this free of charge, all right? Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, thank you. Much appreciated. Um, much appreciated, ma'am. Uh, and he will kind of bow a little bit. <laughs> he has manners. What? <laughs> hey, at least someone. 
<laughs> Mori will just simply not like it's fine. Um, I guess the objective is um find some place at least mostly dry to sleep for tonight, and then figure things out. Okay. Well, maybe see about you finding find a way place. home. Mm, like Mori will go. Okay. Well, at the very least, I can find help you find a place to stay. I don't know much about the topic personally, but I can point you to someone who might know. And I can at least point you to where the libraries are. And, well, I can at least give you the general info of this place. Should help get you set up. That would be much appreciated. I... Admittedly, I don't know much about the topic of how to get home myself, and even... Even the most experienced magician in the world where I came from didn't know how to get me home, but... I haven't quite given up on it yet. Um, so, libraries? Helpful. Very helpful. Einquell is fairly magical, so there's actually a fair bit of information about all sorts of things. I don't know much about it personally, but I hear there are even demiplanes that experienced enough uh, magicians can use here. So there, there may be more options here compared to where you were. Um, as is, though... So I'm just gonna say Moria gives you a, a run a rundown of okay what's up over here and just some general information she knows she would have liked having when she was first dropped to Tynequel. Mm -hmm. Uh, she will note that he immediately like takes a notebook out of the inside pocket of his uniform coat and starts writing notes. Okay. And let's see. So, honestly speaking, so like Vamp isn't here right now, but uh, Moria knows 420, who is Vamp's character, and has canonically helped her get apartments and stuff sorted out for some other folk. So I'm going to say that's the case of what happens here, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like it, it like I'd say maybe a, an hour or two passes, but like you has a whole bunch more information now, mm -hmm. and uh, they're probably standing in front of a flat. Moria is just like okay, I spoke with my contact and this place seems decent enough uh, it may be good if you find yourself perhaps a part time job or something just so you can pay your rent eventually though uh, oh, worst comes to worst I can help that, worst that. comes to worst I can uh, help you pay off the first couple months while you get yourself situated Oh, no, 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 no. I couldn't ask that. You've already helped me so much already. Don't worry. I am fully capable of getting a job. I've done, I've done retail. I've done food service. I've done maintenance work. I've done janitorial work. And, uh, most recently I've taken up counseling, although I don't have a license. Given I was the closest thing the school I was staying at had to an official counselor. I think I qualify. There's just this beat, and, like, Moria is going to give you, on, like, his free shoulder, just a pat-pat. It's just, like, you can see on her face just a... Damn, okay, you've really been through a lot. And he just kind of blinks at that and just kind of awkwardly shies away and laughs and says, uh, point being, I am 
I know how to work. I'm a hard worker. I I am hopefully by this world standards decently employable. You should be fine. Worst case scenario, like you can always learn on the job. Just find one you enjoy, I suppose. And that won't be too bad, you know. Want to make sure it's a decent job too. Not let anyone scam you. Eh, honestly, whatever they do, I've probably had a worse boss. There is kind of like moment of silence, and then Moria goes, "If you want, when you find a job, just like slide it over to me, and I can tell you whether it's a decent one." And smiles and says, I appreciate it. Um, are you this nice to all random people who drop into this world, or did I just happen upon you on a good day? Ah, works work. I'm gonna do my job correctly now. I can understand that. Fair enough. <laughs> and hey, I do, uh, I do get what it's like. Anywho, does this apartment seem decent enough? Uh, decent enough? I, this is wonderful. There's, I don't have to fix any, there's no holes in the ceiling. I, Moria, Moria's, um, uh, how should I put it? Opinion, respect of wherever this kid was before is steadily dropping. He just is kind of looking around, and there is just a bit of genuine surprise. It just, oh, there's no holes in the ceiling, there's no cobwebs, there's no broken furniture. Yeah, this place is lovely. Are, are you sure? I, this seems like a lot. Kid, this is a plain old flat. People come to live here. If you were being sent to some place with holes in the walls and the roof, that would be pretty indecent. I, I mean, well, consider it was short notice and they didn't exactly have anywhere else to put me. I was just happy to have a roof over my head. Even if, you know, that roof gave me a bit of an impromptu shower. Um, the cat on his shoulder kind of hisses in discomfort at that. Just, ugh. Moria just quietly noting that this kid's standards are abysmal. Okay. <laughs> standards are on the floor. Well, as is. Like, Moria's just going to, like, pause hand the kid like enough like enough money to get by for the next couple of days at at the least like there's a place downstairs that sells food i believe oh uh things are sorted out here we've already spoken to the uh a part superintendent yeah i forgot the word uh Whoever, like, owns the apartment you're giving the rent to, essentially. Oh, the landlord. Yeah, thank you, the landlord. <laughs> I like, we've already spoken to the landlord, so... You are free to, con like, confirm that, yeah, you'll be staying here. I can't thank you enough. This is a lot of help. Is there anything I can do to pay you back? It's fine, you don't need to. Still. Especially, like, especially because at this point, um, Moria is actually settled comfortably <laughs> in uh, Villa's town. So, like, she, like, she very casually just shrugs it off. Like, it's fine. Okay, I. That's fair, and I'm not gonna push. Just, you know, if. I don't know, if there's anything you need help with, I'm good at cleaning and organization if you ever need a hand with that sort of thing. Um, 
Anything okay. you need that I could pay you back with, I'm happy to help. This has been a lot. A lot more than I expected. Just dropping in from nowhere. It's fine. You're a kid. And these situations aren't easy. And, like, she says you're a kid, but, like, she doesn't mean it in a bad way either, but, like, how, how old is you exactly? Uh, you is 17. Yeah, Moria is over twice his age, so, like, <laughs> yeah. He was probably taller than her, too, as well, which is kind of funny. <laughs> eh, possibly. How tall is Moria? Uh, five foot one. She is actually taller than he is. Wow, really? Surprisingly short kid. He is five foot zero. Oh. <laughs> Which he will insist For is perfectly average. <laughs> Moria internally is just like, oh, thank goodness. For once, I don't need to strain my neck uh, looking up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I say, looking at most of the people around her. <laughs> nope, this one is one inch shorter than you, Moria. <laughs> I think, I think with that, like Moria will be happy to leave your lad at the apartment, and he'll be able to do whatever he wants for the day. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, shall we? Shall we say that the next day? Your lad would probably look for some job offers, right? Absolutely. So just yeah. So just like next day, it's a lovely day in Villas Town. The birds are singing, and it's like ten a.m. And oh hey, we're back at it again at Moria's office. So do you want to say that we're uh, looking like the kids come back over? Mm hmm. Yeah. He's somehow managed to accrue a decent amount of different, um, like, newspaper clippings and whatnot of just different places that have open applications. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, when he said that he was perfectly willing to work, he meant it. Mm. And he's apparently very interested in finding a job quickly. Fair. So, you know, Moria mentioned, hey, she knows the city would probably be able to know if any of these places are just picking a random example of how a boss could possibly be corrupt, uh, going to scam him out of house and home. Uh, don't worry about that. It's not like he has experience. Um. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, still, Mario's gonna look it over. Yeah. And, uh, what kind? What kind of jobs has he picked up? Uh, how how low are the standards? Uh, literally anything and everything. Um, there's a couple things he's found for like people who need work for from a janitor done. There's a couple things of just like taking care of people's pets. There's you know, a couple different applications for different restaurants or, like, cafes or whatnot. Just... He literally okay. seems willing to take anything. Okay. Like, I feel like Moria looks through the pile, tosses out some because, uh, better not that place. It's on fire regularly. Better not that place. Like, she... Moria probably knows of, like, uh, yeah, no, this place is shady, this place you do not want the kids, uh, staying late at, and it requires late hours. Like, but when she's done, I imagine there's still a fair pile left. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that pile, Moria is, like, genuinely going to ask, what kind of job would you like? Because I see a fair range around here, but... Um, I mean, aside from just one that 
you know, takes care of stuff. Um, I don't know, something boring. And he kind of rubs at the back of his neck and looks away and just, something boring would be nice. I, I could do with a little boring. Like, Moria will pause. She looks aside to the pile of paperwork she has on her desk and will say, Kids, what's your opinion on paperwork? And he kind of blinks and shrugs and says, I mean, it's honestly nice. It's repetitive, yeah, but it's easy to fall into a rhythm with. I wound up doing a bit of it for one of my old employers, Mr. Sam. Uh, he had me balance the books in the back, and I was pretty good at that, and manage uh, intake and whatnot, and honestly, it was one of the more relaxing things he had me do. I would honestly prefer that to deliveries. Like, like Mori will pause and, well, would you like to work here then? Mind you, this is a detective's office, so things do happen at times, but... You have options. I'm going to take a guess you wouldn't be interested in doing actual detective work, but as is, I'm the only one who's really handling a majority of the paperwork. If you need someone to take care of it for you and maybe get things organized, I'd be happy to help. If it's something you'd be alright with, then... Like, she will pull out a paper and is just like, Let, let's, uh, let's work out, uh, like, let's work out uh, what the working hours would be and, like, payment and such. Mm -hmm. And, she, like, she will draft, like, she will draft out something that's, like, pretty dang decent for this kind of job in Villas Town. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He would honestly be a little bit surprised by, wow, okay, you are upfront and decent about things. That is surprising, but not unwelcome. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just like, I have standards, thank you very much. <laughs> and like, she will check in, in, in with the kid like, okay, like, what's your opinion on this? Is there anything in particular where you need to look like, you need to look out for or that uh, would be easier for you work-wise. And if you would like to accept this job, let me give you a rundown on things that may happen. And mm -hmm. would, like, think, like, what would come under your purview and just in general, mm -hmm. work details mm -hmm. and such. And he would, like, nod and take it all in, and he's honestly, like, he doesn't seem discouraged by any of this. Uh, if anything, he seems surprised and happy with the offer. Just, yeah, that all sounds great. Okay. A little frazzled, possibly, by some of the particulars of the possible Toonie bullshit, but... <laughs> yeah, she's just like, she just nods and like, it's like that. And he just uh, kind of says, you know what? Where I came, where I just left, I had my life threatened on a regular basis. I, I am fine with silly nonsense. Silly nonsense is fine. Uh, Mori is just, if someone threatens you, be sure to tell either me or one of the boys here, yes? Uh, okay. J it, she's just like, it usually doesn't we'll go handle anywhere. it. <laughs> Regardless, it's not something decent to do. Eh, decent didn't really apply. But I, I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> like, Moria will nod, and it's just, well, as is, 
where you are now is different from where you were, yeah? Right. New place, new rules, which means new adaptation. We adapt, we survive, we keep going. Mm hmm? Now, come on. I'll show you a couple of the things around here, and work can start proper... In about two days, that sound good? Sounds great. I can start earlier if you prefer. It's fine. Get yourself settled in properly first, yeah? And, uh, it, like, it if you want, uh, the other people who are often here should be coming tomorrow. So if you want, I can introduce you all. Uh, he will nod and he will give a salute. <laughs> <laughs> like, Moria will nod, but like, but yeah, no, work-wise, like, that can start in a couple days. I know. I, again, Miss Moria, I would love to thank you for all of the help. I... Genuinely surprising to meet someone who's so nice. So, thank you. <laughs> oh, like, Morris just waving him up when he's saying thanks and when he says, like, just meeting someone so nice. Uh, she, like, she's a little embarrassed, but in a good way. Just, she's just, it's fine, don't worry. Nice to meet you. I'm sh like, uh, it's nice to meet you. I'm looking forward to working with you. Likewise. Uh, and he will give that bow again. <laughs> oh, Moria will give another nod back, and, and it's just, now, come on, you need to, you don't need to bow all the time. I'll point you to a food plate. So that uh, I'm rather fond of going to with my roommate, and does that and does that seem like a good place to end it? Yeah, I think that covers everything we wanted to cover. You now Maybe. exists in this universe. Moria now has a secretary. <laughs> it's a win-win situation. Uh. <laughs> Good luck, you. You will now be dragged into meeting many, many people. <laughs> Listen. A lot less date. Well, okay, no, everyone's at least a bit dangerous, but they're a lot nicer. Listen, these ones at least aren't going to try to sell his house while he lives in it. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. <laughs> I feel like if that situation would happen, it's more likely that, like, they, w they would collude together to go, like, beat up whoever tried to and then get the house back. Just steal the house if need be, but, you know. How do you just, steal just, a just detective, house? Just detective and phantom f things. It's cool. <laughs> and now we add a very confused secretary to the mix. <laughs> this will be fun. Yeah. Thank you for FPSing with me. This was a blast. Thank you for indulging me. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Everyone say goodbye Bye. to our listeners. Bye-bye. <laughs>